Hey guys, Alexa the Realtor here, and today I wanted to make a quick guide for you guys just to talk a little bit more about the steps if you're considering buying a home. I know that one of the first questions people ask me, especially when they're a first time buyer is, Alexa, what do I do? Okay, and a lot of the times, even not first time buyers, they've bought a house 10, five years ago, and now they wanna buy a new house and the things have changed, okay? So if this is you, stick around so that we can talk a little bit more about that. Now, step number one, okay, the first thing you wanna do, if you don't wanna find the right agent to help you get in touch with the right bank, you wanna do your research and make sure that you're going to work with a bank that's going to assist you with finding what exactly you need to work on in order for you to get to the approval that you wish. What do I mean by that? Okay, so if you're buying a home, now the first thing you wanna look at is your debt to income and your credit along with your income, right? Debt to income. Now, one of the biggest things there is a lender, I like to see it kind of like going to the doctor, right? The doctor is gonna tell you, look, this is what's wrong, this is what we need to do in order to fix it. Or maybe everything is good and you're actually gonna say, hey, you know what, you got an approval, we're good, go ahead and start shopping houses, okay? So when you talk to a lender, they're going to look at your debt to income along with your assets, along with your credit, okay? Now, all of these things are going to allow them to actually let us know this is what we can qualify you for. So number one, get you a right lender that's going to help you understand that, okay? Now, step number two, after you've talked with the lender, it's really about working on those things that might have shown on your credit. Again, if you got offline A's and you're good, hey, now we get in touch with, the, with an actual realtor that can help you understand what your options are and actually sending you properties that are going to be around the price point that you want, okay? But let's just say the lender said, you know what? Your credit needs some work. Well, that is where we're gonna be able to really come up with an analysis of what things you need to focus on in order for that approval to happen. So if let's say your credit was below what they needed, and just so that you guys know, banks are going to have different guidelines. So one bank might say, you know what? I will not qualify you. Anything below a 640, we just can't do it. Meanwhile, I have other lenders that will say, as long as you have the income and your credit now hasn't had any late payments in the past 12 months, we can qualify you even if you're in the 500s. So it does depend. And that is where an agent is going to be able to help you. Typically, we have different lenders that we work with. And if you have the right agent, they're gonna tell you this. They hold no loyalty to the lender. They hold it to you, okay? And what that means is that they're going to tell you, you know what, this lender gave you this rate, but let's go ahead and compare it to what this other lender might be able to offer you. At the end of the day, it's about getting you the best deal possible. And the only way that that happens is by pinning the lenders against each other to see what truly is the best option for you. I've seen clients get qualified at a 5%, 5.85. Meanwhile, that other bank was giving them a 6.5. So there's different factors that go into that. But again, the right lender is crucial in the home buying process. Now that you have the lender situation taken care of and you're pinning the lenders against each other, a very important step here is to make sure you're going to have only homes that are going to work in your budget. What do I mean by that? Even though you might see that 500,000, 400,000, whatever your price point home is, okay, you wanna make sure that your monthly payment is going to be what you ideally want to spend. The only way that that's going to happen is having your lender tell you, okay, this is how much your monthly payment would be, not just your principal and your interest, okay? You want your principal, your interest, your taxes, and insurance. Make sure you ask that. I've seen so many realtors that they try and sell the property saying, oh yes, this is what your principal and interest would be. And a lot of consumers don't ask that question. The lender should have already told you guys, again, work with the right people, but they don't tell them until the very end. They're like, oh my God, this is how much my taxes and insurance is gonna be, I can't afford it. You don't want that, okay? You don't want any surprises. Up front, you wanna make sure you have your lender situated, you have your realtor situated, which is gonna help you understand the debt to income, help you understand the credit factor, help you get the monthly payment that you really need. That way, we can move into actually finding a home that's going to suit those needs. All right, guys, so now that you have everything situated with your lender, you know overall your buying power, you're working with the right agent, now it's our job to really 
understand what your needs in terms of a house are going to be. So I typically will ask my clients, okay, what area do you want to be in? What school districts are important for you? Do you have kids? Do you not have kids? Are you looking for a home that's going to be maybe your primary residence for three, five years, and then you're going to move out? We want to make sure we factor everything in, okay? I'm also an investor in El Paso, so I buy houses and I flip them. And one of the biggest things I like to personally look at is the numbers. Is it going to make sense, right? So if you're going to buy it in an area where you know eventually you're going to sell it, you want to make sure you're getting it for a good you want to make sure that you're not overpaying for something that maybe in three, five years you're going to sell, and now you're going to be in a situation where it's just not ideal for you and your family. Make sure you talk about this in your buyer consultation with your agent, okay? And by this point, you should already be working with somebody that you feel has your best interest in mind, okay? There's a lot of agents, unfortunately, that sometimes they give other agents that are good agents, the misconception that we're just in it for the money. And to be honest with you guys, you need to work with somebody that's gonna service you first. All of that comes after, okay? When you put your clients first, the money follows. So you wanna make sure that you are helping, you're working with somebody that is helping you and that you're helping your agent by really understanding what it is that you need, what your main priorities are in a home, and overall, just making sure you're working hand in hand, okay? If you have any questions, please let me know. We'll be making another video that will go a little bit more in depth with like how to actually assess your debt to income, um, what exactly is your PMI, just a ton more information that goes into it. But these are the first easy four steps that could really help you in your home buying journey. I hope this helped and if you have any questions, please let us know. As always, I hope you have a great day.